Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle with Dan Fancy Creations, and today I am going to be showing you guys how I do one of my most requested tumblers, which is my cowhide water slide and glitter tumbler. I love this tumbler. I sell so many of them. Um, I have wanted to do a tutorial on this for a while, but I typically do them so quickly and do so many at a time that by the time I remember, oh my gosh, I was supposed to film that, they are already halfway done. So this time I made sure that I filmed it from start to finish just to show you guys how I do this. I know that several of you guys have mentioned that you are intimidated by applying such a large piece of water slide versus the small little images that we usually put on tumblers. So I am here to show you guys how I do mine. I usually do it in two separate pieces and I will show you guys some tips and tricks on getting it to look the best that you can so that you're not seeing seams or just straight pieces that can you know, be kind of awkward on a tumbler. So if you guys are ready to see how I do one of my most popular tumblers, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so the very first thing that I do when I have to do my cowhide cups is print my water slide. I either use Haze Brand or Sunny Scopia water slide decal paper, and I do have the regular inkjet and I use clear. I do not use white. And the image that I am using, I purchased it in a cowhide bundle years ago, so I'm not entirely sure where I got it, but it was probably on Creative Market, which is typically where I buy most of my high quality images if I don't design them myself. And the good thing about purchasing high quality images is that you can crop them or enlarge them and it will not affect the image quality most of the time. And that is exactly what I did with this one. I just cropped the piece of the image that I liked and that is what I apply to my um, tumblers. Now my water slides, I typically just use one size, which is about three and a half inches in height and then the entire width of the page. And I use the same image for every single cup. I could, you know, taper them or warp them for the different cups that I use, but that is way too much time because I offer about 20 different cups. So for me to remember what sizes go with each tumbler would just, you know, be too hard for me. So I just use one size and I make it work. So once we have our water slide all cut, I am going to apply them to my tumblers. And you guys can see that my tumblers, I only prep the top part white. I do not spray paint the bottom white for my cowhide tumblers. I have just done several of these and I just prefer the glitter on a stainless base versus white. So what I'm basically doing is wetting the back of my water slide and then I will set it on a cloth or towel or something that I have on hand. I do not submerge them in water. I just wet the backing enough so that the backing starts to release from the actual image. You also want to get a wet paper towel to keep your tumbler wet while you apply your water slide so that if you need to move it around, you can do that. And you guys can see, I basically just wrapped the water slide around my tumbler. And then I go and squeeze out all the water with a microfiber cloth. I don't have, you know, a fancy spatula or anything like that. I just use my cloth. And then for the next part, I actually flip my image over and match up the seams of the image so that it looks like one seamless image that's symmetrical to each other. Now there is going to be one seam, I know you guys can see that, um, but I will actually show you guys how I go back and touch it up with a paintbrush. I will use black and brown paint and I will touch up 
the areas around the rim of the tumbler and any seams that you can see. That way you're not just going to have an awkward straight line um, down your tumbler. It will be more blended. And yes, I do. <laughs> this video is obviously sped up um, because I don't want it to take two hours because I don't want to lose, lose you guys' interest. So you guys can just kind of watch it as I go. I literally just slide the large image off onto my tumbler and then I will use every little piece that I can and attach it to the rest of the tumbler. Most of the images you will see that I do flip and reverse, but some of them, if I can use them, if it's just a small space that I know that I can touch up with a paintbrush, then I will just go ahead and use it because I don't want to waste, you know, any of this water slide if I can help it. So I am just basically adhering the first, you know, quarter inch of water slide to my tumbler and get it, that way it gets a good grip on the tumbler. And then I basically just roll the tumbler as the water slide peels off of the paper. And then I reverse the next image and slide it on there. And yes, you can see this one did have a larger space between seams, but again, I just go back and touch it up with a paintbrush. And if you guys have worked with epoxy for a while, you know that epoxy kind of softens everything up. So even with these paintbrush lines, you still won't really be able to tell that any spot on the tumbler was touched up because black seems to be hidden under epoxy and it doesn't stand out. And I'm sure that some of you guys are going to ask if it's okay to apply the water slide in reverse. I have never had an issue with it. Um, water slide does have adhesive on the side that connects it to the backing. But since we are applying epoxy over these images, it's not like it's going to lift up off of the cup as if you were not going to epoxy it or bake it on. This would not work if you were baking it because, you know, the adhesive would not bake onto the tumbler that way. But if you are covering it in epoxy, this shouldn't be a problem. And yeah, you guys can see that some of these... Um, you know, images obviously are not going to fit <laughs> every single cup. Like this one is super tiny. Um, but if there is a larger piece of water slide hanging off, you can always just take your scissors and cut along that piece. And any other overhang will be taken care of when we actually sand the tumbler. So that's basically it. I am just going to leave you guys to kind of watch the rest of it. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I can tell you about how I apply my water slide. But, you know, this is, it's just easy for me, I guess. I just, you know, put it on, turn my tumbler, and the water slide slides off. One thing I will mention is that when you are using... Um, water slide. I do not epoxy my tumblers before I water slide, but I do spray paint my tumbler with a gloss clear spray because water slide seems to move a little bit better if it is applied to a glossy surface versus a matte surface. If I just spray paint my tumbler with matte spray paint, it does not like to move as much um, and it's pretty much on there as soon as I put the water slide on, which is why I go back and spray it with a gloss spray. Now that the water slide has dried, I'm going to show you guys how I touch up the edges and any other little seams. So I use an angled stiff brush 
and black and brown paint. So with the first step, I really just kind of go around the top edges with my black and really just a wispy motion, I guess. Um, every time I do this, I'm reminded of Stepmom, the movie, when Julia Roberts is showing her how to paint the trees and she makes that whoosh, 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 whoosh sound. That is pretty much what is in my head when I am doing this. So um, yeah, I'm just really lightly going around the edges. You guys can see that I am dabbing off my paintbrush onto the paper towel because I don't want huge globs of paint. I just want to mimic the look of the hair of the cowhide that's already on there. And I do this two times because the water slide is transparent and very slick. So the paint doesn't adhere to it as well as if it were just a regular white sheet of paper or canvas or something like that. So the first go around is really just to get that base color. And then I will go back with my black and brown just to bring in some of that brown color that is in my cowhide. And I have a lot of cups to do so you can watch me do them all if you need to or you can jump ahead 10 seconds to see what the next step is going to be. And this is where I'm going to bring in my brown. I am really just going to mix a little bit of this black and brown together. So that way when I apply it to the tumbler, I'm really bringing some of that brown out that is already in my image on my water slide. And I'm basically just going to apply this color in the same places that I applied the original black just kind of wispy marks around the top edge of the tumbler, around the seam if it needs it, and any other little spots that you can see that are touched up. Sometimes I like to go in and add my own spots to the tumbler, that way it kind of makes each tumbler different. And once all of this paint dries, I do not seal it. I just go ahead and 
put all of these cups on my turner and then we will apply the glitter with the epoxy method. So now that all the paint is dry, I went ahead and loaded my turners with my cups and I am mixing equal parts of A and B and mixing it up into a cup. I will always use fast set if I am applying glitter with the epoxy method. That way I can apply my glitter and then apply another layer of epoxy an hour or two later. It just makes everything really quick. And I typically apply all my glitter with a clear spray paint, usually Rust-Oleum two times. But for this particular cup, I like to use the epoxy method because I apply the base glitter, then I go back with a tea strainer to create the gradient effect, and then I go back and apply chunky glitter. So it is too many glitter steps to keep going back and you know, spraying it with clear spray, sprinkling glitter, spraying it with clear spray again. So it's just easier to do it all in one step with epoxy. And when you are applying glitter with the epoxy method, you don't need to saturate your tumbler in glitter. I really try to smooth everything out and get it pretty thin. Um, that way you don't have big globs of epoxy on your cup or you don't have spots where the glitter is completely soaked up by the epoxy you want to try to get an even coverage of glitter on all of your tumblers and i don't measure my epoxy i have just been doing this for so long that i know i need to fill my epoxy up this far in the cup if i'm going to do you know 10 tumblers at once so I know a lot of you guys use the measuring cups, but I always mix enough for way too many tumblers to even use like the little medicine cups. So once we have our epoxied all smoothed out, you also wanna be sure that you get your bottom of your tumblers really well also. Then you're going to hit it with a torch and pop all the bubbles. And yes, I know some of my cups are a little wobbly on my turners, but that's okay. I will go around the entire cup with my torch just to make sure that all those little bubbles are popped. And next I'm going to take a sheet of paper and my glitter and start sprinkling it on. I do have a couple cups up top, so I'm just going to hold my sheet of paper um, underneath those cups as I sprinkle the glitter on. I do have a little table bench that goes in between the turners, but if I just have two or three cups up there, I just use a sheet of paper. And especially if it's the same color glitter, it's not going to be that big of a deal if a little bit of the glitter falls onto the cup below. And I know you guys can't see these top cups. I'm sorry, but my iPad kind of has limited <laughs> range on how much it shows. So when I apply my glitter to my cups, I start right at the water slide line and kind of let the glitter waterfall over the edge. 
and then of course get your bottoms. I like to let the glitter waterfall over instead of pouring it directly on top of the cup because I feel like it helps that chunky glitter lay a little bit flatter. So I just pour it on one side and let it fall down the cup as it turns. And after we get finished pouring our glitter on, we are going to use a tea strainer to create that gradient look that we all want. We don't want this harsh line that leads up to the cowhide. So I will take my tea strainer. I got this tea strainer years ago when I started using this for ombres and I got it at Walmart. I'm not sure if they have the same one, but you can find some similar. And I fill it with the glitter color and I just tap it along the edge where the glitter line and the cowhide meet. And it will spread out a little bit as the epoxy cures and the glitter moves a little bit. But even just now, you guys can tell that it's not a harsh line. It's just a slight gradient up from the glitter to the cowhide. And to help with the gradient even more, I get some of the chunky glitter that I used in the mix. And we are just going to sprinkle the chunky mix mainly at the edge where the teal glitter and the cowhide meet. And then a little bit below it if you need to. That way you're going to have an even spread of the chunky glitter from the bottom to the top of the teal glitter or whatever color you want to use for your cowhides. I did have to go back and add this because my original video cut out. So that's why you may see chunky glitter already on my cups. <laughs> and once that epoxy has cured, I will kind of brush all the glitter off if I need to, if I feel like there's excess glitter on there. And then I will epoxy these cups two times. I always do it two times just to make sure that the glitter is covered really well so that when I go to sand, I am not going to be sanding off the glitter itself. And I still use Facet for these layers as well. So a few hours after this epoxy cures, I'm able to go to the next step, which is sanding the top and bottom rims and the tumbler itself. So now that the epoxy is totally cured, I'm going to show you guys how I do my rims. And that is basically just taking a sanding block and angling it on the tumbler edge and scrubbing it. I know this is sped up a little bit, but I have so many cups to do and I don't want this video to take two hours to complete. So I do show how to do this step more closely in most of my other videos, but it's pretty basic. All you're doing is sanding around the edge of the tumbler. And I know several of you have said that you worry about getting an even rim all the way around and I have never had an issue with getting the rim even it's you know it's pretty easy to get a even rim all the way around the tumbler you can also use a dremel if you want to it was just cold in Georgia when I filmed this one so I chose to do all of my cowhide cups inside because it would take a while to do it outside and I did not want to be cold. <laughs> and 
and I do keep my water on and my sanding block a little bit wet just because you don't want those sanding particles going into your air or breathing them in. This way, if they're wet, they tend to just wash down the drain. And once we have all of our rims sanded, then we are going to sand the bottoms. So I always sand the bottoms and then also sand the middle part of the tumbler just to smooth out any, you know, chunky glitter that may be sticking up. You can also use a Dremel to do your bottom rims, but these were not too bad, so I did not need to break my Dremel out for them. And once we get all of these tumblers sanded and really smooth, we will be ready to decal and then put them back on the turner for their final layers of epoxy. And once I dry off these tumblers, I will weed and apply my decals and then put them back on my turner for the final two layers of epoxy. I always do two layers just to make sure that that decal is good and covered. And that is pretty much it for these cups. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know several of you guys have been asking me to do it for what seems like years and I just never got around to it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I can't wait to see what you guys make. If you guys liked this video or learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Also, don't forget to click on the next video coming up in the line. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, check out my tutorial group on Facebook, which is linked in the description. Thanks for watching!